culture. Why did you invade my country 50 years ago? Sat on this land and live up with the fat of the land. And you expect me to be happy? You are so angry. I can feel it. Yeah. You treat me as if I am your colony still? <laughs> you must be kidding. Why would I allow it? Why would I allow you to treat me as if I am your uh, uh, representative here as a colonial governor? We are an independent country. Uh, we will uh, survive. We will endure. We can go hungry. But this time, I want my country treated with dignity. So you uh, once said that you don't want America in your country, so you were serious? Yes, I said no, I said uh, American troops. That one day during my term, I'm, uh, if I survive the CIA, <laughs> oh no, if you, I survive the CIA, I have stayed five you years. You talk a lot about assassination, do you really expect that to happen? They do it. Does you, it surprise you? Are you worried? Well, they can are you afraid of your life? They can even uh, pluck a president out of his country and face, uh, force him to face trial in another country. What should happen so that it improves? Are you, are you, waiting, said, are you waiting for an apology? Let's no, say, will no, it work? No, no, that's not. Uh, I, I, I don't want that thing to happen. So, what may, uh, what it's, may a, help? it's enough that uh, I respect Trump. He's a friend, and he is uh, welcome to come here on, on November. But if I'm talking about arms, if I'm talking about mutual uh, defense uh, regarding ISIS, uh, I'd rather, in my preliminary talks with uh, President Putin, I got a favorable response. I hope uh, we can uh, convert it to something substantial. Because it is only Russia and China who can be relied with their words. America is double talk. Yeah, the left hand does not know what the right hand is doing. Because uh, I said the arms are suspended and the Senate has not really agreed or they're still debating on it whether to give us the arms or not. My country is fighting terrorism. How long can I wait? Until such time that we are on bended knees, it might be too late. For after all, if I do not act now, and so with the drug problem, if my country collapses, who will bring it back? The United States? Russia sells arms. He does not impose the, she does not impose any conditions. When Russia sells the arms, he sells the arms. You need it? I will give it to you. That's a known fact. You do not attach conditions. A straight negotiation, if you're ready to help, we we'll say, okay, we will help, we'll give you this. And can you do that with America? No. Because the president says he will give you, and the State Department said no. And then his Congress, we said, oh, no, he's a human rights violator, so. We, we keep a, a distance. And then, if that is the case, so be it. I will not hunker for it on bended knees. I will not ask uh, uh, for mercy for that alone. Welcome back. We can now bring you the second part of our exclusive interview with, with the Filipino President Rodrigo Duterte, in which he touches upon some of the security issues facing the world at present, and also gives a personal account of the abuse he suffered as a child. You just came back from China. Yes. Your relations with China are a little bit warmer than compared to your predecessor and actually warmer than it was expected. Yes. We didn't see you riding to the islands in the China South Sea with Filipino flag to put it there um, as was promised. Is that uh, just tactic or you changed the strategy? Yeah. Oh. When it is so ridiculous, it must be a joke. I, I'm fond of using jokes here that I brought that practice also nationwide. 
Datwa.